13 would be 8687 so when you divide that by six bills that's an additional credit of um, fourteen dollars and forty eight cents so the bill with the changes for the sewer rate for 2013 takes it down to the 19760 the additional 2013 flat rate reduction that's being proposed um, by council would reduce it by another 1448 taking the minimum bi-monthly bill for residential family to 183.12. So I, it opens it up for discussion, and then we can talk about the next steps. Absent pouring another half a million dollars in next year, how much would the rate jump to from 183.12 for the next year? So the, pr the proposal for 2014, um, the bill goes up to 220.25. So that would still be the case. The, the exactly. credit just wouldn't be. So that's a huge increase. Your question is? Well, just, just that, that <coughs> how much does, it doesn't change 14 to 15 at all. Correct. It's a temporary band-aid. This what I don't even necessarily want to say what the recommendation is coming forward from the administration. What we are hearing from council and what we have brought forward to you is a <coughs> one-year infusion of a half million dollars of general reserves, unrestricted, unallocated, to go towards uh, rate relief, but just for one year. Brent. <coughs> Uh, we had, during this next year, the next nine months, we're going to be uh, studying our rate structure that will provide some relief for flat rates. Um, so this might be a, rel a smoother uh, process than uh, it appears right now if uh, we uh, take uh, the assumptions of uh, Councilmember Greenlee at face value. Um, but with, with these studies, it could be a level thing and also uh, one of the reasons this uh, half million dollars got built up in our budget is because of the increase in utility tax revenues because of uh, they're just a percentage of the underlying rate. So we would also see some reserve funds being built up as well, that this thing could be continued in the future, especially with the growing economy. Potentially. Well, I've only been on council for a little over five years, but I know enough about the history of the city that the first mayor guard, Jeff, Sean's older brother, made some real changes in moving the city toward a modern, medium-sized, very professional city from a small, good old boy network. Some of those changes involved hiring our first city administrator. Also, great thought was given to the whole financing of the city. Up until the first mayor guard, there was no reserve policy. The city didn't actually have reserves. Since that time, it has been canon in this city that thou shalt not spend thine one-time revenue translation savings on ongoing expenses that if you have savings you've worked you've scrimped and you saved and the staff gets tremendous credit for coming in under budget every year since I've been on council those savings should be spent to buy things in technical terms, <coughs> capital investments. They should not be spent on relatively transitory operational expenses. That is the road to ruin. And I feel strongly that it is a mistake 
to spend reserves on operational expenses as a generality. Then there's the additional thing, which is a bit arcane for the, for the public in, in the audience, but as a matter of law in Washington State, a utility is a separate enterprise. It's not part of the general fund of the city. We are not allowed to transfer money from water rates to the general fund except in payment for services that the general fund provides, like management. So it, it's not a perfect comparison, but if you think about a huge conglomerate like General Electric, the aircraft turbine division has to stand on its own. It does not fund the locomotive division and vice versa. And the same should be true of the city that the water utility needs to stand on its own, the sewer utility needs to stand on its own, and the stormwater utility needs to stand on its own. If we need to do this kind of transfer, if we decide that a one-year rate reduction, and by the way, the cost of service study, there's no guarantee at all that it's going to be lower the base rate. If you really start looking at the cost of service, the additional cost, off the top of my head, the additional cost of another 100 cubic feet of water is close to zero. And we're charging about $2.50 for it. So if you go to a zero based base rate, it's not at all clear to me that you end up seeing significant savings on the base rate from what you've got today. So if we have to do this, what I could support is a loan from the general fund to the utility. <coughs> that is allowed by law as long as there is and, and in fact, the water utility could lend money to the city, but it would have to pay interest at the state set minimum rate. And if, if we want to do that, I think that's appropriate. Joyce? Well, I have a question. The utility taxes can go into the general fund and they, do. They do go right? into the general fund. Right. So there is money from the utilities that go into the general fund. Uh, that's, that was, can I follow up on that, Joyce? Yes, um, how much, and I've, I've tried to get this question, and maybe it can't be answered. It's unknowable. I don't know. But how much of the $174.60 bill that people are paying right now for their minimum uh, service is utility tax? We'd have to calculate that. I don't know that we know that specifically. Is it more than $14 a month? Well, it would have uh, because to be this, because I, this was a utility tax cut, in, so. in my view. It's not, a, it's not a transfer from the general, I know it's being couched that way, it's not a transfer from the general fund. It, this was intended to be a utility tax cut. And the, the, in that case, the, the uh, utility operation is not a separate, you know, we're not messing with that internal dynamic there, we're just cutting utility taxes. I think internally it makes a difference to us, correct? Well, it, in, in functionally. The, the ordinance does not change the utility tax rate. What we discussed rather was um, leveraging the concept of a utility tax cut, talking about it in those terms, but producing the same result by using the bucket of money where the utility tax revenues go. And instead of changing the tax rate, take reserves that are unrestricted and apply them uh, to the bill. Residential bills. Residential bills. Um, to, to take care of mitigating if that's the council's desire further than what we were able to do with the with the capital facilities plans reductions 
And so it's kind of a surrogate for that. I think it's, it's fair to sort of couch it in the terms that it's a utility tax cut. But we are not formally reducing the tax rate, but the pool of money from which these $500,000 is being derived uh, comes from all of our general taxes. And any accumulation of savings is flavored by property tax, sales tax, and indeed utility taxes. So I think, you know, conceptually that nexus exists, and I, and I think it, it's reasonable to, to talk about it that way. But um, because we were talking about um, a one-time scenario, mechanically it is easier to do it this way than to simply to, well, not simply, to go in in a more complicated way, change the utility tax rate, go through the machinations of what that would do to the rates, lower the revenue that we would receive in 2013, and just plan to spend deficit in 2013. Instead, we keep the revenue the same, and we give back, if you would, an equivalent amount of $500,000. So at the end of the day, we still end up using $500,000 of general fund reserves. Can I suggest a different method of doing that? Um, under Washington, Washington Municipal Code five, Chapter 5.08, we have our, our tax rates, and that includes the internal tax we charge on water and sewer. Um, could we just drop in a footnote there that's in saying during the year 2013, the amount charged uh, will be reduced by this much per residential household. And so it would be a utility tax cut in effect under that method. We explored that. Uh, we, didn't, we did not seek legal advice specifically about a non-uniform utility tax application to all types of customers. We did not pose that question. We would have to pose that question one of the things that the mechanism that we currently have does is it avoids any of those types of questions because it's simply it's an application of our general funds. Um, we could certainly pose that question um, and ask if there's any uniformity well, The uniformity uh, provision of the state constitution only applies to property tax and this isn't a property tax. So potentially it would not be an issue. That is, that is a, a, a mechanism. There's probably multiple mechanisms that result in a $14.48 and um, bi-monthly savings, if you would, or reduction to a base residential utility bill. The, the one that's before you is one that we had been discussing that just leverages reserves. No matter how we do it, um, it will require reserve spending. general comment I'm actually in support of this tax credit um, I understand we charge 20.4 percent uh, for water uh, for utility tax and a 10 percent rate for sewer and um, if you look at dollar amounts um, just in a visit last Friday to um, our finance director's mm -hmm. office she gave me figures of 500,000 per year coming in from water for utility taxes and 361,000 coming in uh, for sewer. So hopefully I got my figures right. You did, um, but the fire, fire fund does right. pay $256,000 back to the water fund um, for the maintenance of the fire lines for the utility fund uh, due to this Supreme Court ruling that the utilities can't pay for the um, maintenance of the hydrants. Okay. Well, so even with with that two, you said two hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. Correct. Two fifty six. Okay. So two fifty six coming back. Um, our our figures that we're bringing in per year are still over five hundred thousand between the two utilities. So essentially, the monies that we're looking at in the general fund, the half a million dollars that we're pulling from reserves, um, could have very well come from taxes that people have paid in, uh, you know, based on their utility rates over the years. So I see this as basically going back to the ratepayers, um, coming back to them full circle, 
and I'm in favor of it. Uh, I think overall, though, we need to have um, a conversation as a council and as a city about um, our utility taxes, why we charge the rates we do, how we got to that point, and do we want to continue to charge those rates, or do we want to consider lowering them possibly for 2014, and <coughs> you know, do we want to make this a policy versus having them rolled into a bill and essentially hidden from our customers every month. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I think we could certainly start that, um, some discussion on that during the retreat. We certainly have projections, that type of stuff. It's, I don't, I don't think that there's anything right or wrong to your utility taxes and or the rate that they're at or whatever that is. Some number of years ago, our predecessors along the way decided that that was one of the ways that they were going to fund the general obligations of the city and it's a piece of that. So if we want to look at any given year, $800,000 in utility taxes and say that's too much to collect, let's cut that in half to 400000 that's fine. We just need to find another $400,000. That's the rub. Brent? I am kind of upset some of the, uh, well, I'm, I'm upset might be too strong of a word. People were surprised that I went to the trouble to write a draft ordinance um, doing a lot of the things here on, on cutting utility taxes. And in that ordinance, I initially included some things um, that were a little bit outside of this. Uh, I'd like, I would like more information, um, as Councilmember McDaniel brought up. One of the basic questions I have would be is what our rates would be if we stripped out, just, just to, how much of our rate is, is pays for operations, debt service, and the 25% uh, debt service coverage ratio we have. Um, I know we're paying more than what that would cost because we're building up reserves and some of its uh, utility taxes and, and whatever. But I really would like to get some an answer on what, what, we have, what the absolute minimum is we, we would have to charge uh, to uh, legally comply with uh, our bond covenants and uh, provide service. Um, there's some other deliverables and other information I'd like to have, and I'll be bringing more of that up. Uh, probably send you a list of things that I'd like to bring up at retreat about that and uh, how we could, because I was actually wanting to enshrine it in the ordinance so we can get these things back in, in um, a certain amount of time, and I don't think that was reasonable in hindsight. But uh, uh, I also was working this ordinance to work with the issue, the unusual issue of how utility taxes technically work. It's really the ratepayers technically don't pay the tax. It's the city that pays the tax. It's imposed on the city utilities, and the ratepayers, the, the tax is passed on to the ratepayers. Um, so to pick and choose certain kinds of ratepayers um, and give all, some of them a cut, like the residential ratepayers, um, is a little difficult um, to do. But I think the ordinance that I drafted kind of got at that how you could do that. Okay. Trevor, do you remember from the, uh, the current rate study that we're under now, other than the argument that utility taxes aren't required by the bond covenants in order to collect those revenues, I don't know that we're really collecting much of anything over and above what we're, the bare minimum that we are to be collecting to do those repayments and our 25%. We, we are um, collecting what is necessary for operations and maintenance. We are collecting what is necessary to meet the uh, various ratios for coverage for the debt. Um, the one thing that we are doing, which is a best management practice that was introduced to us by our consultant, uh, something that we should have been doing in the past, and in part is caused part of this problem now is this notion of system reinvestment and essentially what that is doing is it is saving some money through raising cash now so that the next round of debt will have a bigger down payment on the debt so if if you're going to uh, 
need a, a car in your family at some point and you know that you're going to have to finance it, you can save for a while and try to go into it with 20% or you can try to go into it with 10% or you can go and, you know, get a 100%, you know, go put zero down and get a 100% loan. Uh, best management practices we've been advised is that it's good to try to go in with some cash position for your capital facilities so that it's not all debt. You're aware of some communities that uh, are totally cash positioned and they do not incur debt. It takes a long time, as you can imagine, to, p to position yourself to do that because you have to build that cash up over time. So there is a, a, a part of these rates which is there to put some cash away so that the next round of debt that we'll have, which, which we will need to have according to our plans, um, will be a little less debt than we would otherwise have to undertake and then those payments can be, uh, the interest rate will be a little better, uh, but so that's a little piece of it. Um, if we were not to deploy that best management practice, there's a little bit more room. And we could figure out what that is. And I think what would be very helpful, particularly since we do have um, several council members that weren't on council when uh, FCS was here a couple of years ago walking through very in a very detailed way as other council members rem will recall um, the all the various component parts to the rate study and and why we're doing it the way that we're doing it and how they are best practices and although that is made available to you it's, it's a, a very uh, complex scenario and I think um, FCS does a good job of walking through that and I think perhaps what we could do is when we are uh, kick-starting that cost of service uh, study that we might scope them to come and visit with us. They can tell us about what a cost, is, uh, again, what, what a cost of service study does, kind of what they'll be doing for that project, and then they could loop back and maybe uh, not as extensively as the last time, but I think walk through why our rates are what they are, why, why they needed to be what they are, and what parts of it are related to what I was just describing, the system reinvestment, and then that was a policy decision that the council made a couple of years ago that they felt that uh, that advice was prudent advice and that they would uh, adopt the system reinvestment approach. It's not absolutely necessary to do it. Um, it just means you don't have a ca you know, much of a cash position as you move forward uh, for the future debt. So we could bring that back for you. And I think that would be very helpful. It all sounds very logical. But we sat here and listened to people that are suffering because they cannot afford their bill. <coughs> and we have to address that as a council. And somehow to come up with enough money to cover what needs to be covered of our debt, but also to give people in our community the feeling that we are aware <coughs> that this is onerous on some of them, and we need to address it and explore addressing it every way we can and still be prudent. And I feel a resistance as we're, as a council, trying to come up with a way to mitigate this, that, that you're resistant. And I do understand the bottom line. But I also understand people who don't have enough money to pay a bill. And that's our responsibility. Those of us on the council have that responsibility. Uh, one, one other thing, so I think Councilmember Greenlee touched on this, and I agree with him on this point. Uh, our growth pattern, our growth changes, has slowed down since 2006, and we made these assumptions. And one of those things that I think we need to look at is maybe uh, uh, amending our capital facilities plan, and we probably won't need to spend as much money on some of these things that we plan to spend money on and also look at alternative financing methods as well. The um, adjustments on population were already done. Those, our current plan is not based on 2006 numbers. Yeah. Well, uh, it all rolls off of our comprehensive plan, our comprehensive land use plan. And so we've identified the areas uh, to the northeast and to the north of the western part of the community for areas of future growth. And then what we have to do 
is uh, work with the Department of Health on the water side, Department of Ecology on the ecology side, and we have to show how we're going to serve it. And then we develop capital facilities plans that will do that, and they, they mirror the time frame of our comprehensive plan. But these are all plans and they're projections. However, <laughs> it does tie us into having revenue in order to incur the debt, and we're planning, we're planning years out. So I, it is a legitimate approach to revisit our comp plan. Take a look at the comp plan. I, I have not been in a context where there's been a retreat from, if you would, the, the vision that was cast and where the urban growth boundary was described and where the uh, urban reserve is like we have, where you've planned for your future over time and you retreat from that, draw a different line and therefore not need as much in the way of capital facilities. But it is really truly the capital facilities demands which are driving this, this problem. And the way to, to solve it is to scale that back or, oops, excuse me, or come up with alternative financing where we're not incurring debt. And one of, a great way to do that would be other people's money, uh, which would be grants, flat out grants. Um, Less expensive debt. Less expensive debt, for example, Public Works Trust Fund. You know, we are hopeful to get 1% money for, the, for a lion's share of the project uh, at the plant. Um, but as you know, at the legislature this, this session, uh, that is at risk, that Public Works Trust Fund money is at risk of being swept in order to balance the state's general fund budget, and there wouldn't be those low interest loans available. So um, we'd have to k stick with, you know, the revenue bond level. Um, you know, the question of the utility rates, uh, excuse me, the uh, utility taxes, uh, it's a policy question for the council. It absolutely is. It's, it's one of the fundamental things that a council does, and that is how much revenue are we going to uh, produce from our constituents for our general funded core services, police, fire, parks, um, <laughs> and the like. And um, the state legislature has given you a portfolio of tools to do that. And the most familiar ones are property taxes and sales taxes, but for many communities, not just Washu, well, utility tax is one of the one of the three major sources of general fund revenue. Um, you can look at how much you want that to be or not to be due to the specific nuance of how it ends up basically coming through the utility bill, if you would, because that is the way it is designed. When we all get our natural gas bill, there's a city tax. In that case, they're more readily able to, um, to, to pull that out and to show that. Um, as a percent of gross, they just look at the gross for that, and, and we can explore on our end whether we can do that. Um, so it's, it's a policy conversation for the council to have. If we went to zero utility taxes, I mean, that would be the complete other side of the spectrum. Uh, that's absolutely something that the council could enact. Um, it, it would come with implications because we have to have a balanced budget. So we would have to find um, either other revenues that are general revenues to make up for that, or we would have to cut from our general fund programs an equivalent amount or some combination of the two. That is, that is fundamentally uh, one, of the, one of the roles in, uh, of a council. So we're open you know, to that conversation and, and, and where the council wants to, to go with that. What's before you in the immediate sense because there's some other things that we're doing to try to mitigate particularly for the base residential customer such as the, well, how much base rate we have. Because we're, we're still working on some of those things, it's, we've sensed clearly in the direction we received at the last meeting that the council, or at least a majority of the council so far, would like to see some one-time relief this year in addition to what we've been able to do so far and we continue to look. Um, that will require the use of, of general funds and uh, we have a mechanism for you that will do that, and it will provide that $14.48 of additional relief. Mayor, 
if, if, you know, in your consultation with MRSC, I guess, on um, legality of this, if it, if it turns out that they have a concern that limiting this to residential customers uh, is a problem, then I would, because how many of our, how many, we have 5,700 residential customers? Is it roughly? Is that? Roughly. Uh, roughly. And how many commercial customers do we have? It was about 500, I thought, wasn't it? There's a, there's a difference between the number of accounts that we bill okay. and the number of, of accounts. Because, for instance, we send the apartments one bill, but there's multiple ac accounts that go into that bill. So there's not a nexus between the 5,100 for the two sides of towns of okay. bills that go out. Um, so I don't have, I can look and see well, just Well, my, my point is, is to, to get to this, and we talked about this last week after the meeting, it was just a flat <laughs> reduction per account. Right. And we could, include, right, we could include commercial in that if, if it turns out that that's, not, that's legally advisable. The, the ordinance that's before you <coughs> and the mechanism that we have has been legitimized by legal advice. So that approach has been legitimized. What we didn't ask was, uh, we're, si we're simply, we uh, um, apply a flat rate reduction to the, the actual utility rate and then provide general fund dollars to make up the difference so that we can meet our bond covenants. Um, we just didn't ask them specifically, uh, can, could we cut the utility rate only for, and we didn't ask the, the nuance of that, you know, call it a flat rate and not, and not do it as a percentage. We could certainly do that. I think at the end of the day, um, we just want to say Right, and, and this one does it for you. If, if the direction of the council would be, please expand that to beyond the residential, um, we, can, we can recalculate that for you and, and let you know what that would be. It'll be a lower amount, it'll be diluted. Only legally advisable. Yeah. Right. I'm not acting as a lawyer. Right. I'm not taking a Okay, so y y what you have in front of you accomplishes the goal, I believe, of um, leveraging general fund dollars that have accumulated over time, in part due to utility taxes that we've collected, and using those funds uh, one time in 2013 now, while we continue to work on this issue, to provide for that amount of uh, relief bimonthly for residential customers. It's, it's uh, legally legitimate, and it's a policy question for the council. Well, just to be clear, the history on the accumulation of most of these reserves is that in 2007, the city issued over 450 single-family building permits. There's sales tax on all of the lumber and all of the materials, and in fact, even on some of the labor that goes into building those houses. That generates windfall revenues from sales taxes. And that has been the primary source of these additional funds or reserves, historically. <coughs> property taxes, although it may seem to you because your property tax dollar amount may have gone up, every year for the past four, this city has gotten less property tax than the year before. We have not raised our property tax levy in four years. Now, I would like to take credit for that with a big smile, but the fact of the matter is that we are prohibited by law from doing so. But the, the details are arcane, but we can't raise our property taxes without limits. There are very, very tight limits on how much we can raise our property taxes and in fact, we haven't been able to raise them. They've been forced down. We have no control over sales tax revenue. <coughs> One of the things that was part of the original, I think 2002 downtown revitalization plan is what can we do to get retail businesses in Washougal? Because retail businesses pay sales tax and if you look at the percentage of our revenue that is sales tax, 
and compare it with any other city in Clark County other than Amboy Yakult, we're very low. Therefore, utility taxes were about the only way we had to make ends meet in terms of keeping fire protection and especially EMS. If you look at what EMS costs, it'll take your breath away. Police is not cheap, but parks and streets end up being small in comparison to those. My concern here is one of the reasons that we're in this bind is because the city has not raised utility rates until three years ago for more than a decade. That means that we were behind. And frankly, the longer you were here, I know this is going to be painful and I'm going to be in trouble for saying it. But frankly, the longer you were here, the more of a free ride you got. And now we're trying to catch up. The people who weren't here, all of their houses, the new houses, every house that's been built over that period of time, paid a substantial what's called an SDC or a system development charge, which gives them the right to hook up to sewer or to water, or actually and to water, and actually for the past, what, three years now, I think we've had an SDC for stormwater also. So what I'm concerned about here is I've, I'm always conscious that part of my job here is to pass on this city to those who follow, not only not less, but greater than was given to me. And I'm very concerned that we not steal from our future to put a Band-Aid on a present problem because this does not, spending that $500,000 do, does not in any sense fix the problem. All it does is postpone it at great expense. So I'm very concerned about that. I may end up, I mean, I, I know, I agree with Joyce that it's painful. I, mean, I live, I'm retired. I would say I'm on a fixed income, but that's not actually true because my income is a portfolio. My income last year was less than the year before and less than the year before and like that back to 2008. So I feel this too. I'm under the gun or under the checkbook. But I, I, I beg of you, let's be smart here. It may be that what we have to do is throw some, some, take some hard-earned savings and throw them at an immediate problem. I may come to that point of view. My natural reaction is that's a bad idea. Um, I have a question about the ordinance and Exhibit A and B. Um, just taking a look at the numbers, would Exhibit A and B change if we do include the $500,000 as tax credit? Um, if not, would it come in the companion ordinance? If you look at um, Exhibit A, is the water correct? I think so. We made it as a footnote. Uh, so it's probably um, minuscule print. <laughs> Where is I was having trouble with the Excel forms, but yeah, right between um, multifamily in the first block, oh. underneath the multifamily, um, there's a little note one that oh. says the base rate shown okay. for 13 shall be reduced by 1448. <laughs> no, no, well, that must be much, much <clears throat> bigger. <laughs> what was that? I said that must be much, much bigger. 
It's the same size on mine. <laughs> <laughs> And then you'll notice that there's corresponding note ones no, in all caps under um, the requirement th would be much, much bigger. Under the three quarter inch meter, the one inch meter, and the multifamilies is where the note one. Mm. I probably should have bolded that. I'm, I apologize. I'm sorry, I went the sewer. Under single family inside city limits on the far left. Uh huh. For three for under meter size, it says three fourths to five eighths. And then in all caps, it says note one. So that would be the one that would apply to the note that would get the decrease. All the ones that have the note one next to right. it. Right. Okay, I see it. Note one. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> I'll bold that for next week. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And the, is it is it on the um, the sewer somewhere? No, it would just be linked to the water. Just water. Just to oh. for ease of finding. Um, the correct folks to identify, um, the water was the easiest route to go to attach oh. that to. Um, <laughs> that way it's the easiest way to get the, to the dollar amount of 500000 If we split it between utilities, it'll be more difficult to get to that <coughs> excuse me, underlying dollar amount. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? I want to hear from the public, so I'm not going to say anymore. <coughs> Dave, any items? I want to make sure and address uh, a couple of quick things. One, um, Brent, I don't think you upset anybody by doing your ordinance. It's just, it's different than the way we're used to doing it. And it's my habit. You know, I, I've been doing this for 15, 20 like, years. Like I said, it's a little different for you to write an ordinance than some of the others that in the past we've had to come back and, <coughs> anyway. Um, probably be a little odd for Ted to start getting ordinances from his council over in Vancouver, but just a thought. <laughs> Um, Joyce, my apologies if you are sensing a reluctance on the side of the administration and staff on this thing. Um, it, I think it would be, obviously your perception is reluctance. Um, I don't, I don't think that, I don't believe that to be the case. I believe that we want to make sure, one, it's totally in your purview, and this administration will never forget that, that it is totally in your purview to <coughs> distribute the dollars, create the budgets, create the policies, create the ordinances, excuse me, pass the ordinances. Brent didn't even hear that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was looking at the ordinances. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is one of the, the easiest way I can explain it is this is one of those items that from my standpoint, which means that for the most part it should be on the staffs as well, that when you all, the council, are looking at so vastly changing what have been some very painful conversations in regards to reserves and how they're used or any of that type of stuff, it, it, I don't think it's, it wouldn't be correct of us to continue to push back on that, but I want to make sure that we are asking the question every time we possibly can, are you sure you want to go this direction? Because what can easily happen on the other side is we could easily just take whatever we think consensus comments are of council and go that direction without asking any other questions, not wanting to create any waves, and we could very quickly get ourselves in one heck of a mess. So. Um, Certainly not intended to be reluctance. So this, this administration and this staff will do whatever it is and we will get fully behind it. We understand as well as you do that there are individuals in the community that are hurting. And we understand that we want to do anything as you do prudently to bring down the rates. We certainly understand what got us to this point to begin with and the, the corrective actions that we've taken that are basically keeping us um, in compliance with the state and the feds. So we want to make sure that as we go through these, we don't set something up over on the other side. It is totally in your purview to make those, those adjustments in there and uh, to utilize those funds. I think I've said in public settings that we need to either have the discussion about some sort of programmed useful use of excess reserves or we need to give them back. And this is certainly one of those ways of giving them back. So my apologies if you're feeling that way. Um, my last item is on timing and I don't, I wanna make sure that there aren't any surprises along the way. 
um, and we've had some discussions at staff level and we still need to I think have a couple more discussions at staff level even though they may not know that yet right now um, we've had this on track the ordinance to come back to you next week my thought is that one I want to give staff as much time as possible to get any additional information that you need on stuff I also believe I want to make sure that you all have a very informed discussion at retreat on what are reserves what are excess reserves what are all of those pieces um, my initial discussion with Dave was to potentially bring forward the ordinances at your workshop on the last meeting of this month and make a portion of that workshop which will be just after the retreat and make a portion of that workshop a special meeting so that you can enact those ordinances and they would go in place the concern from a staff level is however you do this whatever accounts we're going to affect they need to go in and literally code differently 5,700 and some odd accounts so that they come out correctly and there's a time lag in doing that if you take that a little bit farther then it becomes is it a budget burden for folks because I didn't get my bill when I normally did I didn't get it I didn't think about it I didn't pay it I got it a week late and oh gosh now I'm jammed up another direction I want to have another uh, discussion with staff on timing of bringing all that forward because again just like the discussion on utilizing the reserves I want to make sure that we have a fully a fully prepared discussion on it <coughs> which includes potentially needing those reserves for a couple of other years out based on projections and or not needing those <coughs> just for the general operations of the city so um, I don't want to delay this thing any further than is needed but I want to make sure all those conversations take place my belief is if we enacted at a special meeting on the tw 27th 28th of this month even though we may you're looking at me funny even though we may delay billing by some little two three days that we still have those enacted in time to affect the first bills at some point over the week it occurred to me that maybe the most useful thing to do at this point since so there's so many balls in the air would be to postpone the rate increases from <coughs> effectively the end of January to the end of March or even conceivably to the end of May it needs to be the odd numbered months because but that would give time <coughs> staff time to ring ecology's chime and 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 a number of other things so I'm not looking for an answer tonight. I think we have it though, because okay. I asked that question if we could postpone them and legally. Uh, I think the real concern, we would have to go back and fully evaluate it. But if we were to not do any increases at all, um, I am concerned that we would uh, run afoul of our covenants. So I, I you wanted to know when we make bond council nervous. Yeah, I, yeah. I need to explore that further. So our approach was to yeah, I, work quickly to try to bring you a solution as quickly as we could, as opposed to stopping and then potentially having to make it up. Because uh, yeah, and, and I just I want to be clear that I'm talking about postponing it yeah. for two months or four months and. I'm not looking for an answer tonight. I would hope that you would look at that and consider it and that there's probably time to bring that if if it works to bring it forward for the next meeting of council. I'm not sure that we would really need to do a lot of workshopping on that question as long as you were reasonably assured that it didn't lead to any really serious problems other than that we're just postponing the rate increases and we might even you know it's conceivable you just might say well the rate increases henceforth happen not in January but in March and make that true for the following years as well I have no idea whether any of that works but while reading the 
documents, our, our bond, doc, our bond uh, I want to call it an indenture, but you actually give me, gave me the initial offering or the offering statement. We have to charge a rate sufficient to cover <coughs> operations and debt service. So long as we can do that, plus 25% uh, reserves. So long as we can do that, we're okay with uh, with a, a postponement. Uh, you know, one of the vehicles we could do this and then just level it out later on is we could just do a utility tax holiday for uh, <coughs> for just the uh, for just the uh, January bill. And that would that would not involve the bond uh, issue at all. Right. We would um, we could do that. Um, and then you know, obviously you have to reduce the the cut to make up for that for the subsequent <coughs> months. But could do it that way. Right. If we did that, we could. Uh, we'd probably need to bring a supplemental budget to. Um, it would be to uh, not collect the the first billing cycles, uh, not apply utility tax for that portion of the year. We would have a certain reduction in general fund revenues, and at some point we'd potentially have to identify you know, the reserve spending to, to make up for that. Whether we'd have to do that right away or could do it later in the year, we could explore. But it'd probably potentially result in a supplemental budget, which we're going to do anyway. I mean, it, the way it is in, in front of you now, we would make, <coughs> make these adjustments. Uh, the adjustments that you have before you, including this one-time use of reserves, are legal. Um, and they do not run us afoul of our covenants, but they d it does require a supplemental budget to appropriate that 500000 and, and when Jennifer was going to get to the next steps, one of the things she was going to mention, it's a very, very simple ordinance, so it's not in your packet in the workshop, just a very simple ordinance that says, oh, we're, ta <coughs> we're taking the five hundred and we're putting it over to the utilities. That would have been in your, your packet next week as well. Um, can, I, can I interrupt you for just a second? Um, because it was expense and the budget we approved in December, we still need to yes. uh, amend the budget? Well, it's, re it, it's revenue. It's an expense to the utility, and it's revenue to the general fund. <coughs> You're talking about the utility taxes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is a, it's an, a, an operational expense to the utilities. Uh, and then that money goes to the general fund. So the supplemental um, budget would um, lower the revenue from other sources uh, to the utilities and um, transfer the $500,000 from the general fund so that the revenue stream for the utilities would stay legit with all of our bond covenants and all of the tests. Um, you know, as I contemplate the delay, um, the the, conver the broader conversation <coughs> about reserves. We're talking about utility taxes. We're not talking about the actual fees. <coughs> the fee should cover our debt and everything that goes with it. The the, the taxes <coughs> on utilities should not be covering. Debt. They are not. That's correct. They are not. But they're revenue to the general fund and. Um, we're going to be using that money. It's already set aside in an, in an unallocated and reserved fund that we approved Correct. at the end you, of the year. Right. Still, your question was, to would we have to do a supplemental budget? Yes, you would. When you approved that, it was approved with the provisions that we would come back and identify what those specifically what those would go to. It's just in a fund now. It's not in a fund that pays for something. We need to move that into those. Right. Simple to do. <coughs> very, very. It's just a mechanical thing. It's not a policy question of any kind. It's just we didn't appropriate any spending. Okay. Right. So we we need to. Um, so we're just appropriating the spending at that of that five hundred to and and it, and I I've, I've called it the transfer over to the utilities. That's essentially what it would be. We'd, we'd, we're going to send it over to the utility. Um, is how this would work to make up for the five hundred thousand in less revenue that the utility <coughs> received because of the credit. Um, so we, uh, to delay for a little while, uh, I could see a reason to do that would be if the cost of service study could come in and we could try to roll all of that in with it together and change <laughs> the way we do it and instead of phasing it in, 
phasing some initial reductions right now and then potentially the base rate going down even further if that's what comes out of the cost of service study. Um, but those are, those are the types of mitigation that are available this year. We've already sharpened the pencil on the plan, on the facilities plans. Um, changing our comprehensive plan, that's going to take, that's not something we can do in the next quarter or two. Uh, part of the decision making on that isn't even ours. Um, so the, the real opportunities are what we've done in terms of the uh, capital facilities plan, potential use of the general fund reserves, and then the cost of service study. So I, we, can, we can research the question that uh, Councilman Greenlee had about what would be the implications of deferring any increase at all for some short period of time and what would that mean for the increases? Could it be that we can just reset the date to March 1 or April 1, whatever it is, and, and just do that in perpetuity and would it have no impact? If that, if that did, that would do something. But I don't know if we can do that. And I frankly don't right. have a clue. Right. That's, just why I That's the I question. Yeah. I don't personally believe we even want to go there. I don't believe we want to make bond council and the holders of those bonds have any inkling that we're starting to punt anything, even if it's a a date that is 90 days down the road. Nothing, nothing against this council whatsoever. I think. The, I believe that the rate structure you put in place in 2010 was a vast relief to this city and to the state and everybody we answer to. And we received the rating, we received the assurances, and we received the funding that we got as easily as we did it because you made those decisions that said, this is what we're going to do. At this point to say, but two years in, three years in, now we want to adjust that 90 days. At that point, I could see those folks having a discussion of, okay, 90 days. Then what if it's another 90 days? Then what, you, you crossed into a little bit of a shadow area that I would just assume we, we literally face the question and the challenge and figure out a way to do it that is prudent, that gets it done now. To comply with the bond covenants, all we have to do is show that we're charging a rate sufficient to pay for operations, debt service plus 25 percent. I think part if of you everything. If you show that, then I don't think there's a problem. But I right. think all of that in showing that to them, part of what they're relying on is that rate structure that we put in place that has dates and numbers certain. Isn't that what the underwriting was done on? We also, um, in order to get the bond money, we had to show them the ordinances with all the approved rate increases. And also, we um, provided them with the adopted policies for financial practices, which includes the system reinvestment, includes the 1.25 percent, um, includes the, the 45 to 90 percent, or 45 to 90 days worth of O&M. I mean, it has all those things factored into the utility policies that were forwarded for the um, for the bond company. So I don't. I mean, I would assume they took those into consideration. In, in making their decision, but I don't know how, um, if we changed one of those, I don't know how big of a blip that would be on their radar. Well, if you found an alternative way of meeting the same coverage, correct. I guess funding it with the reserves we're talking about. Anyway. Correct. That's I why we. I don't think they have a problem with that. Correct. Right. I don't think they'd have a problem with that at all. No, I was just answering. Well, two things. Um, at some level, I agree with the mayor and, and would point out in the strongest possible terms that it is not a question of meeting the legal minimums when you're dealing with bonds. Because the bond ratings are such a matter of opinion and favor that Yes, you can make the point of view that the contract says this and we met the contract terms. On the other hand, if the bond community is unhappy, you will pay through the nose. There is no doubt about that. Yeah, that's not the way bonds work, Paul. And the other, but that said, 
it seems like it's a fairly easy phone call to bond counsel who is a consultant to us to find out if that would be a problem. Second, unrelated question, if you go through your original reductions, which amount to 6.41% this year, have you projected forward that reduction in utility tax into the general fund? That would be part of the budget amendment that we're going to bring forward because it does re reduce the um, taxes by, I believe, 50000 roughly. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Any other items from council? We go to a different topic. <laughs> we're, I know the public is wanting to speak, but in our normal agenda, we, have, we want to bring something else up. I would um, like to hear from the public, I want to hear from the public. And Sitting here patiently, but I do have some things to bring up after today. Unrelated to the utilities. By our agenda, we'd be going to the public next. I just want to make sure that council is completed with this item at, at this point. Can I, uh, can, could I just ask um, on the agenda next week what we had planned to do was have, have an ordinance ready for you that was going to do three things. One, it was going to enact a reduction in the rates uh, due to the capital facilities plan uh, changes that we were able to make. It was going to introduce different thresholds, higher thresholds for the low income seniors and we have some folks that are waiting to do that um, and I think that's important. And then the third one was I th where I think mm -hmm. most of the conversation is, is taking place is around this use of reserves. <coughs> How about if <coughs> we could bring the ordinance just as it is back to you with all three of those questions for you next week for your consideration. The mayor has asked to potentially defer at least the, the reserve conversation until after your planning session. Um, they just need to know what to have for you next week on the agenda for your action. Um, we could pull out any part of it or we could keep all of it and you could make amendments if you choose to next week um, or we could not bring it back at all and, and answer some of these other questions. Let's chat tomorrow after department head. I think uh, the simple answer is you're probably bringing back at least the first two items. Okay. So that sounds good to me. I, okay. I may introduce, I may move to amend it if you just bring back the first two items. <coughs> Thank you. Um, my recommendation is to bring it back as is, and I feel confident that, you know, if we come up with further information or you have something else to present to council that uh, you know, might be different and we might want to amend it, then we can certainly do that. But it's been done before, so we can handle that. Going to public comment. <coughs> yes, ma'am. I'm only coming up here because I talk normally very low. So if you can hear me. Um, just two quick things. <clears throat> uh, on the change with a low income for seniors, is this just an estimate or is this what you propose? Other than the fact that I know you're, that it's um, you're going to do a federal mm -hmm. accounting. But what about these this sixteen five? Is that ineffective now, or is this a, just you're going to wait for the figures to be? No, um, the fifteen and twenty thousand numbers are the current numbers. Right, but I mean, um, and then we're going to link it to the HUD federal site, so they adjust annually, and those are the correct. 2013 amounts. So those so would be the new are, ones for 13. And then it would adjust annually. It's um, they base it off the median median income for the area. It's extremely low income, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. That's what you were after. It's extremely low. Correct. Those are those and are and very low income. Correct. I just find them low. That's that's what they use for concern. all their federal. That's okay. Input. 
Um, I just need to understand. We got five hundred thousand. Where is that money at? Is it in a checking account, savings account, money market, index fund, mutual funds? Where is it at? Primarily savings account. So we're not receiving any interest or making money on five hundred. No, we do. We have it in um, numer. We have different savings accounts that have that do earn interest. Yes, but it's not very a lot. low. Very low. Is there any way? <laughs> just thinking, not suggesting or making changes, but taking that five hundred and making money out of it and using that to pay some of your bills. I mean, I mean, I'm ignorant, you know, with the city and how you work your money, but. If I had 500000 I bet I could have some money coming in every month by investing we used and to. using that for sure. bills, yeah. we, we used to. debts. Um, the reality is, obviously, with rates down where they're at, one of the things that we don't do is traditional investing into stocks, bonds, that type of stuff. We keep it pretty liquid, and we keep it awfully insured. You keep it liquid because of the economy going up and down and the instability of... There's, there's actually guidelines that we have to follow. The state doesn't allow local okay. governments to invest in risky, okay. which That's are usually higher wondering. returns. Okay. It's a good thought, though. We wish sometimes that we could. We can't own stock either. <coughs> who, who would like to be next? I'd like to know what the rest of the communities around here is getting for their water and, and sewer. Uh, how is how is our uh, bills compared? We um, we've talked about bringing forth a, a comparison. It really, to a large degree, Ray, it really doesn't matter what anybody else is charging because it all comes down to individual circumstance, what their plants are, how up to date they are how successful they've been in getting grants, how much larger they are, how much more industry they've got versus residential. We could we could probably give you a fairly easy uh, snapshot of where everybody is and where we rank in there. And for the most part, other than where we rank in there, it doesn't mean a thing. Yes, but if I was going to go down and buy a car and uh, Ray Hunt Chevrolet was selling this same car for 200,000 and we wanted to, to uh, charge 600,000, I would want to know the difference and you know who I'd go to if he was still here. I hear you. Mayor, uh, Rose needs um, uh, for the record information from the last speaker, please. I've got, I've got the names written. You know it? Okay. Sure. Next. Hi there, still Bill Durgan from 13th Street. I don't know, Paul, what you were saying about going down to the park on Thursdays. Get that out of the way real quick. Uh, Sunday afternoons about 2 o'clock, any of the parks, usually a lot better. You know, Thursdays probably work better for you, but Sundays are a lot better. Uh, you know, like you guys were just saying, things are different everywhere. I just went to Yuma where they just built a big plant down there. Uh, good news was, right after they built it, they decided they didn't have enough money to operate it, so it's not running. They didn't change their water structure there at all, and the people there are pretty happy about it. That's not what's going on here. The, you know, this increasing is making this a less desirable area. It really is. More. I used to talk to people all the time that wanted to move out here. I haven't done that in over a year now, and it used to be a weekly event for me. Uh, I know a lot of people and talk to a lot of people. It's not happening. And this is this is part of it. The cost of living out here is going up. It's unfortunate, but that's going to change other things. It's a less desirable area now. Uh, you know, and the water bills, a lot of variables, but they are a lot lower other places in a lot of places. And uh, that's, I don't know why. It's said this is, this uh, city didn't know how much it costs to run a city treatment, and it doesn't sound like you still do. I, I assure you, Bill, we do. You do? We okay. do. Okay. It's, it's, it's sounding like you're still wondering. Nope. And you're talking and, about a, and, uh, studies still going on, cost studies. Mm -hmm. Six months ago when I was in here, you were saying 
you did not know before what it cost to run a treatment plant and now you do that's but now you're still doing a cost study that's incorrect and we're talking two completely different things okay uh you know and then the uh, hooking up you were talking about uh hooking up to your sewer system now it costs a lot of money but i uh, remember when i was a kid right down the street here it cost a lot of money to hook up to it then and that was when they were just installing a lot of it here but i remember that being a big budget item in 1960 it's a big budget item now wouldn't be a real surprise it always has been to hook up to a sewer system thank you bill just one piece of information and we haven't even necessarily shared this with the council <coughs> I, I understand a lot there are a number of times you have conversations with folks and they talk about the cost of the community how much more expensive it is and we're going to stifle growth and people moving here I do want to make sure and assure council the last two months our real estate excise tax those taxes the revenue that we receive off of homes and properties selling have been the highest that we've had in four years five years they're going up 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 people are moving to the community now whether they're doing that on an informed basis and they're asking that I know my wife and I whether we lived in Vancouver Camas Washougal I don't recall we ever asked the question before we bought any homes of <coughs> what the what the cost was of utilities but we compared them to the to the previous ones but right now we're experiencing an awful lot of properties that are turning hands and that are selling which is a very positive thing any Rose, do you, do you need my name? Mm -hmm. Ann Garden, 4813K Street. I gotta go see how much snow we have. I just, I just want to make a comment to everybody here. I grew up in a very small town, very small town. And I go back now, and I see what my mom pays for utilities, for water, for uh, everything. And it's changed, but they grew. They had to change. But you know what that little town has that I think offers more things to growth than a higher utility bill? They have a community center. They have a large library for kids to go to. They have all kinds of things that have brought in their families, kept their families there, helped them grow up. I remember some of you, when you first got on council, you had these goals of creating these things. and. For $14 a month, I'll find some way to save that money to let the city do things for the entire community, not just one segment. Thank you. Don't be shy, folks. You want to say something? All right. <clears throat> I. Um, name and name address. Say. What's that? Name and address. Joseph Drew, I live in Washougal. Um, I want to say to you that I commend you for the work you have undertaken here to try to work on this here, where you said you wanted to mitigate this impact and make adjustments to the capital facilities and things of that nature. I am involved in as a manager of large civil construction projects in excess of a hundred million dollars so I know what it takes to run an infrastructure and how it works and how things go I do want to say that I'm impressed with your swap plan and what it takes to run that and everybody was talking about how the plan works and how things should go if you can remember the five P's the five P's are prior proper planning prevents problems. And I think that's one of the biggest things we need to keep in mind here for everything that we're going to talk about and undertake. So we have to plan properly so it doesn't bite us. You plan the work and you work the plan and it usually works for you. And our infrastructure is our key to our livelihood around here. So we know that we have to have that. So I want to commend you on your guys' work and what you've done. but. Something that's been brought to my attention that concerns me was this undisclosed tax, which was the additional fund tax on the, on the utility funds. And 
I wonder why it's never been talked about before and why it wasn't out there for the public to know. And for sure, why didn't we talk about it last time when we had the other meeting about the water utility rates and the sewer rates? Why wasn't that brought up then? I think we need to stop using obscure wording and phrases around here and just get to the meat and potatoes of what's going on and be straightforward with the people. Because I think the people are getting tired of all the razzle dazzle. So, as we go along here, this fund that's been taxed here, under what statute did we do this under? And what statute sets the rates for those percentages that you take from each one of those revenues of the water and sewer? And how long and how much has gone out? Because if you've been doing it for a while, there should be quite a bit of money sitting there. And who authorized this? And is it an authorized transactional financial transaction? And through all of this, does the city attorney know what he's signing and what's going on? And my other point is, if you're holding off on your infrastructure, then it won't hurt to cut the rate on those taxes, that 10% and that 20.2%. Because if you're holding off on your infrastructure projects, then it's not gonna affect you when it comes to the bottom line of the money, because the only projects you have to keep doing are the ones that are required by law. Through the taxes don't go to... Uh, they go to the general fund. They go to the general fund, not towards right. projects. Right, but we've been moving stuff around, 500,000 from here and other, other places going other places. Like I said, back to the razzle-dazzle. We've got to stop the razzle-dazzle, what we've got to do. Okay. So, we've got to keep our, I think the answer <coughs> to all this here is in this tax of the water and the sewer. If we can cut that 20% and that 10% and get it down to a manageable level, I think the answer is right there for the money we're trying to save for the citizens. So, also, Paul was talking about how we've lost home building and he's right about that. We need to bring more businesses to here to help bring some of the money back. Now, Sean did say that uh, homes have been sold. That's a good sign. So, but I think we should also try to talk about applying for grants. We need to get some grants here and see what we can do in the grant department. Because I know there's a bunch of ecology grants out there. There's infrastructure grants out there. Because the <laughs> government does want you to upgrade your facilities because they know that a lot of these old facilities, old infrastructure is costing cities a lot of money and breaking down their finances to, for the upkeep on them. So they are offering grants out there. We need to go find those. Also, municipal bonds are not a bad idea right now because the interest rates are low right now and they're favorable right now. So I think also we want to try to find some money for ourselves here <clears throat> is do we have any old equipment sitting around? Old uh, city vehicles, equipment, tractors, anything we can sell off and try to get some of that money there too to help bring it back. And also, <clears throat> the people who ended up stealing money from the city before, the previous mayor and the finance manager, the previous finance manager, have we gone after them and tried to recoup some of those losses from them <coughs> and uh, attached their checks or Try to find some way of recouping some of the money from them. I think that's uh, something we can do there too. You know, every little bit helps. And my main thing though is I really would like to have the answers to this. Uh, why was this never disclosed to the citizens, the 20% tax and the 10% tax? And what statutes are we doing this under? And what statute sets the rate? And the other thing I want to say in closing here too is <clears throat> The citizens are moving into town who are very educated and very informed <coughs> and they pay taxes here in this city and they want their investment represented at a high level of integrity and honesty. And sometimes it's not always there and I like to see that myself. But I also wanted to talk about the bonds, saying that bonds there's an end date on them. There are times that bonds are extended. Sometimes it costs you a little bit more money, but usually it's at a very reasonable rate. So maybe we can get an extension on some of our <coughs> bonds here to help out too. So you can answer those, do you have any 
we would stay here to help you re refresh your. J well, Brent, you just had that. Uh, I, just, I was looking to look up the staff that said, the it's ordinance. The Washington Municipal Code 508. 040. 040. 040 is where the, I think, subsection 7. So, All Joseph, of the, you, Joseph, you yeah. got a pin there? Yeah. Yeah. Did you write that one down? <coughs> Subsection 405. 5.080. 5.080. 5 and there's a subsection. Subsection. Okay. If you go on. If you go online, our city code. Oh, I want you guys online. to give me the answer. You guys should know this right now. No, you guys we don't should know be, that right you, now. You got your your computers up there. I've seen you guys been pulled up all night long. Okay. You've been sitting there answering each other's questions. So. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so you, can you answer the other one? What statute sets the rate? This is this paperwork right here too? It's all in there. You, you talk okay. about an undisclosed tax and it is not an undisclosed tax. It's in our city code. It certainly would have been adopted by the council. Uh, how come it wasn't brought up last time? It's been in the budget. It's brought up every single year in the budget. Right, but when we were talking about last uh, time, we were having our discussion about the rates. Yeah, actually, let's go back to that, that last we're, meeting because- okay. um, Joseph, this, this is an opportunity for you to ask questions Right, and, and I, am, comment. I am. This isn't and I'm, necessarily. I'm making a comment right now. This isn't necessarily a question and answer, so I need you to get through okay. the information that you All want right. to get to the council. So, uh, Jennifer, this is directed to you. No, it's directed to me. Okay, so your 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 uh, finance manager, last time you asked her, when we were sitting here, uh, for the statements. She said she didn't have the financial statements, and. Uh, the city council should be reviewing the statements every month and signing off on them. And we do. And. She should know the balance of the funds at the time when it's asked. Because last time we asked questions and she said, well, I don't have the answers, I don't know. And as a finance manager, she should know that every single time. No. Yes. Okay. And when is your year end for the city of Washougal? December 31. December 31, okay. So you're not gonna be able to answer the questions to me because you don't wanna answer, you want me to just look them up for myself. So. I can't rebuttal against your reply to me or? I wouldn't necessarily have a reply to you again. This isn't a question and answer period. This is an opportunity for members of the public right, to comment to the council. Right, but this lady up here just talked and you answered her back and Some answered her question. Will. And when they're reasonable questions, I do not expect Mrs. Forsberg to know the balance of every single account in this city at any given moment. It's not going to happen. Well, then why so do you have your computers up here? Do you guys pull up all the time and find your own answers for yourself when you're up to look at Is there for anything them? else you would like to comment to council? My comment is stop the razzle dazzle. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to address council? Good evening. Good evening. I'm Don Widener, Post Office Box 170, Washougal. I want to uh, again reiterate what other people have said. We want to thank. The council members, the mayor, and the city staff for the uh, extensive amount of work and effort that you put into administering the city and undergoing um, this interrogation on water and sewer rates. Um, it's a very difficult subject. I think it's been handled well in the past few days uh, and few weeks, but there's an unfortunate appearance that has come out of all of this, and that is of non-transparency, non-disclosure, and nearly subterfuge. The question that was previously asked, why weren't these utility tax rates made very, very apparent, very transparent to the public, like putting it on your utility bill? The last utility bill that I looked at didn't tell me how much of that bottom line was taxes. I don't think it ever has. <clears throat> Being in the city code is obscure. It's a poor, poor answer. You should have known it's in the city code. I don't think anybody in this room can quote the city code. I don't know that anybody in this room has read the full city code. I haven't. So it looks like, it looks to the public, and there's a, a, a strong appearance here, that the general fund has been living high on the hog off the utility rate payers. It looks like. 
It may be entirely justified and substantiated, but I haven't seen that done. It looks like Big Daddy Federal Government and the nasty state government and Department of Ecology are all at fault here. I'm not so sure that's true. The appearances are that we're laying off and not answering directly. Another appearance is that the 500,000 that has been proffered up just recently after the big outburst a couple of weeks ago is throwing the dog a bone so it won't bark. I want to assure you folks, every time your utility bill comes out to us, the dog's going to bark. This is not going away. Something needs to be addressed, and that is how defensible are the general fund transfers, administrative charges, and utility taxes necessary <laughs> for the general fund? How much goes each year? How much has gone in the past 10 years? Where has it gone? And why is the general fund so sacred? Somebody said here tonight, uh, well, if we give up $400,000, we're just going to have to find it somewhere. Not necessary. You might think about not spending 400000 You might think about having a leaner, meaner, administrative staff. You might think about having a leaner and meaner administration of the entire city. You might think, geez, maybe this money could have gone better spent in some cases, rather than $18,000 here, $20,000 there, $15,000 here for memberships, travel, and subscriptions. This is country club stuff, folks. Nobody's going to die if you don't have that in your budget. It might have been better spent in police and public works. It might have. So the appearances are we're being very defensive about our general fund and the comfort of life in the city administration rather than the ratepayers. You have a item in your budget, I think, and all these utility rates made me just kind of plow around looking here and there so I don't have a really strong grasp of your, your entire general fund expenditures, but you've got a, a budget item here, I think, for a director of community development, do you have one? Mm -hmm. She's presently on unpaid. Oh, really? Yes. So you have a director of community development on unpaid leave. What's the salary for that person? Is it in the budget? It is. Why in is the it in the budget? Where's the person? How come somebody else is doing that person's work at a lower rate? Appearances again, folks, and there's no aspersions cast on anybody. It looks like you're loading your general fund and you're laying off on the utility ratepayers. It looks like. I think a lot of things have to be ventilated, and you may want to consider these in your retreat. And I hope the retreat isn't the final word. I hope there's uh, more opportunity for public input following your retreat. Thanks for your attention. Good. Thanks, Don. Yes. John? Would you stop? Would you stop? This is a city council meeting where we are going to have respect and decorum in the room. Making little snippy comments is not I'm going to ask you one last time to stop. Thank you. John? Well, my comment to the council is that uh, I'm sorry the previous gentleman had that attitude because I sat through six and a half hours of this council arguing over a $36 million budget and spent a lot of time arguing over $10,000 items. I've sat through meetings that lasted a good well over three, three and a half hours with the public in here talking about water and sewer rates. I've been here tonight for over three hours listening to the council ask all kinds of detailed questions. 
So to say that there's no transparency, I, I don't know what more a person really could ask for. I think the questions that are asked by the council, interaction with the staff, is, uh, is transparency. If you want to come down to the meetings, if you drop by once in a while, I guess you can get those appearances. But if you come here all the time and you watch the city council, your appearance would be a quite different point of view. And an example of that was tonight. This council asks a lot of very detailed questions. They got a lot of detailed answers from the staff. And to me, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, I think this is a model of how small local government should operate. Everyone gets a chance to comment. I remember the other night when the mayor stood over here and waited till I don't know how late it was, but it was late until this room was so filled with people that people were standing out in the lobby and the mayor stood here until the last person had a question and answered every single question that was answered in detail. And to me, I think from my point of view, that's as transparent as you can get. So I'm sorry that some people come occasionally and they have a different point of view. Because uh, my point of view is you couldn't do a better job of answering the questions. These are difficult issues. I'm impressed with the way the staff handles it. And I'm very impressed with the elected officials in our community. So I'm really sorry that some people think that uh, these water rates and sewer rates are somehow um, enhancing the uh, lifestyles of the city council because of course we know that's as far from the truth as you can get thanks thanks john anybody else that would like to address council i have one thing about the P bpa the Obama power association you guys are talking about the towers and the underground the reason why they won't do the underground is because it costs millions and millions of dollars to do that because a 500 kb line has to be at the minimum 20 feet underground all the utilities that you would cross on the way up from the bank of the columbia up to the top of the hill could be hundreds of lines you have to cross sewer uh, electrical lines so that's why they won't go underground the reason why the towers are much taller is because those 500 kb lines are twice the diameter of the 200 50 ones, so therefore they weigh more per foot, so the lines droop farther down when they go down the side of the hill, so that's why the towers are taller. So, but in answer to the going on the ground, they won't do it, it'll cost them millions of dollars to go on the ground. Plus, they don't like to have those 500 kV lines crossing other electrical lines and other utilities too because of the way the current draws on them. And, and if you got a uh, uh, a soil composition of a lot of iron in the soil or anything of that nature it'll draw the electricity on it plus a 500 kV line needs to be constantly inspected because of the high voltage that it carries and they don't they can't inspect it underground that's why when you see those guys up there on the helicopter sitting on the line and checking the lines because they have to constantly check those things with the currents that they carry and that's why they don't go on the ground with lines of that caliber so I hope that helps you a little bit thank you Anyone else that would like to address council? Okay, moving to mayor's report. I have just uh, one item for you this evening and that is to remind council that you have your AWC legislative conference in Olympia scheduled for February 13 and 14. If uh, you are interested in attending that, uh, if you could let Rose know and once we know who, if anyone is interested in attending, then we can come back to you with, uh, with those individuals and or if we've got too many folks who want to attend or whatever it happened to be for you all to discuss. Items from council. Go ahead, Paul. Couple of things, I will be uh, out of town during the legislative conference. In fact, I will miss that one week. Um, a couple of 
couple of uh, details that I'd like to clear up that were asked as questions. We talked about a cost of service study. We talked about a rate study. It had occurred to me that those terms are possibly confusing. What the, what the rate study looks at is how much does it cost to do sewer services in total and how much revenue do we need from rates to take care of that? On the other hand, the cost of service study asks the question of how much of that rate does it actually cost to provide service to an individual, whether it's an individual house or an individual business or what it is, and how should the structure, how, how should those rates be structured so that one side, one side isn't subsidizing the other, or at least if it, if it is, and I think this is really the more important question, that if it is, you actually know that. And the problem is that that's the piece that we're missing, is, is the cost of service study. So we don't actually know how much it costs to deliver one more unit of water to your house. On the other hand, we do know that we need this this much rate from every house because we need that much revenue. They're two separate questions and they're possibly confusing because of the way they're made. Just a, another quick aside, I know it's kind of a nerd, nerdy thing to do, but I have actually read the city code all of it. Well, we have. Um, the, and I don't think <coughs> the, and I can assure you that we also surplus and sell any equipment that we're not currently using. We already do that. We've done that forever. That's not a, a new thing for the city. Um, one thing that I kind of left out when I mentioned the, the, the <coughs> going back to 2002, the, the what became the revitalization plan for, the, for downtown. Now, I've only been on council since I was seven, and only been involved with the city since I was six. So some of this is third hand. <coughs> but the key piece of information is that once the house is built and you're not getting the SDCs and the, and the sales tax from the construction of the house, roughly speaking, residents costs the city a dollar and a quarter for every dollar of revenue it provides. <coughs> so ultimately, building more houses is not sustainable. It's a losing situation. On the other hand, typically, and it varies quite a bit with the business, a retail business costs about 65 cents for every dollar of revenue it provides. And part of the reason is because it a typical retail business provides so much sales tax. Interestingly enough, and in, in the case of industrial buildings, the, the variation is huge. Some of them cost the city, would cost a city about 15 cents for every dollar of revenue they provide. Those are not new numbers. That's something that was well understood years ago, and that's part of the reason why the, the, the revitalization plan was so important. You know, if, if I had the fairy godmother's magic wand, we would definitely have a lot more retail in this city. But there's we're very limited as to what we can do to recruit that retail or industry. We're doing everything we know how to do or are allowed to do by law to do that, either through Quita or through the efforts of the mayor or the city administrator or the planning staff. There's a lot going on that people just aren't aware of. We're trying our best to bring in those jobs, but 
retail is important too, not just because it, it because it provides not only minimum wage jobs, but because it provides retail sales tax, which pays for services that we would otherwise have to pay for with either utility tax or property tax. The general fund pays for police, fire, parks, streets, the maintenance of city hall, and for the management services necessary to run the rest of the, of the city. The city has a total budget of about $35 million. The total number of employees in the city is on the order of 80. It has been as low as 74. To give you something comparable, the city of Camas employs more than twice that number. This is already an exceptionally lean city. Has been since long before I was on council. In fact, the former mayor guard, I mean the previous mayor guard, uh, Jeff Guard, deserves a lot of the credit for that. As frankly does Stacy Sellers. That we have always run a very lean organization. So there really isn't a lot of surplus out there. If you are actually interested in going through all 89 pages of the budget, call me. I will sit down and do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dave. I have the most one day and things to bring up. Um, I got a, we got an invitation today to go to the new Washua Camera City Administrator's reception, which is scheduled at the same time as our pre-retreat dinner. Mm -hmm. Is there any possibility of arranging, rearranging things that we might be able to? It's actually not your pre-retreat dinner. It is your <coughs> retreat. There's, there's no dinner. <laughs> Sorry to tell you about this. <laughs> It's the there might be a couple of snacks there, but no, <laughs> it's the start of your retreat. But the retreat is, is Friday night and through to Saturday. Okay. okay. Any, any chance of rescheduling whatever it is uh, to uh, so you're going to parents over there? <coughs> yes, let's discuss it. Okay. That's my Probably point. not in regard to our schedule, but in regard to their schedule. And I had informed them ahead of time of when our retreat was, and they did what they did. So they knew full well what was going on. And okay. That's my was mundane topic. Uh, understood. Controversial topic. Understood. <laughs> Any other items from Council? Joyce. I'd like to share David's thoughts about our, my colleagues. Thank you very much. And, I, and the staff, all the work that you do. And I have a special shout out for you, Jennifer Forsberg. The time that you have spent helping me get through this and understand it is greatly appreciated. Thank you. And Trevor, thank you for your work on the, the plan. Karen? Um, I want to say thank you to the staff um, as well. I mean, all of these doors to their offices are wide open any day, Monday through Friday. Probably not Saturday and Sunday. but. Um, um, yeah, so these, these guys are available. Paul is a wealth of information. We meet and sign off on the finances every Monday of every single week throughout the whole entire year. So um, if anybody want, you know, can be of help, Paul, Jennifer, um, I'm really new, and so all these guys have been always open to me, so I appreciate it. Um, 
I am looking forward also to my seat on the parks board, so thank you. Um, and then I also wanted to say that the, the chamber luncheon this Thursday is in regards to schools. So I just thought I was really interested in that topic. So I just wanted to put that out. It's at Camas Meadows on Thursday at 1130. Other items? Um, yeah, make sure and get your RSVPs in if you want to attend the luncheon. It's the two superintendents doing state of the schools. Um, and none of us, they haven't released it yet, so we don't know what they're saying. But that uh, is typically a well attended one. Uh, and what I'm, I forgot was just a reminder next council meeting is not next Monday, it's next Tuesday. Holiday is on Monday, so we'll be here Tuesday at 6 p.m. With that, uh, if there are no other items, we are adjourned. Sorry about that, John. I appreciate your remarks. I've never been before. Not bad. How about yourself? Yeah.